Welcome back everyone. My name is Token D Rock here with another video. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to be going over more institutional adoption when it comes to Bitcoin, talking about the possibility that we may have reached the price floor for Bitcoin, and some epic news coming out of Polygon. Before we hop into that, we got to take a look at the market. Bitcoin dominance is sitting at 46.1%. Bitcoin is almost at 32.2 within the hour or so that I've recorded this video, Bitcoin's price has come up roughly $200. So very good for Bitcoin. Some of these altcoins are coming up. ETH was down roughly 200 bucks within the past 24 hours. So it's good to see it climbing up to $2,000. Cardano went almost as low as a dollar, pretty sure. Polkadot was like right around 10 bucks. Dogecoin was like at 17 cents. Uniswap was just under 15 bucks. There were some really solid bargains these past 48 hours. Um, I hope you didn't ape into your buys. You know, make sure your dollar cost averaging spreading out those buys. Again, your safest bets are Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if you're going to invest in any of these other altcoins, do so at your own risk. So our first bit of news has to do with Grayscale and their GBTC unlock schedule. So a lot of FUD from some big names, some big institutions, some big players on YouTube talking about this massive capitulation that we're going to see on July 18th, this past Sunday, and that we could see Bitcoin go as low as 26, 24, even 20K. The real FUDsters, the real bears in the market were saying oh bitcoin's finished it's going to zero why do you guys keep investing in an asset class that's losing value blah 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 you know the usual fud how you had it jp morgan even trashing bitcoin it's the usual fud talking points from these institutional players we did see a sell-off this past sunday and honestly more like this past monday but it wasn't as big as everyone anticipated. But yeah, this article essentially says that the worst is over. Probably won't be seeing a massive sell-off like we were anticipating this past weekend. So in my opinion, this is overall pretty bullish for Bitcoin because even though there was that huge, massive unlock, we didn't hit 28K. We didn't hit 26K like a lot of the bears and the fudsters and the community claim we were going to. And look, both Rothschilds, Investment Corp, and ARK Invest have added to their holdings in July, the latter boosting its Bitcoin exposure by an additional 310,000 shares. Come on. This is perfect timing, you guys. I mean, look, the B word's happening today. I'm sure we're going to hear some massive news about Bitcoin and, you know, green mining rigs and stuff like that. I could really anticipate a huge pump in bitcoin's price following the b word event today but hey i may be wrong for all we know um elon or elon however you like to call him may uh spread some more fud to drive the price down further but i don't know i think largely today the stuff we hear of e word event is going to be huge more institutions hopping into the crypto space bny mellon joins state street to service new crypto exchange as the article states bny mellon has joined a consortium of six banks behind the launch of london-based pure digital a new crypto trading platform venture that is scheduled to execute its first Bitcoin trade in the near future. Upcoming crypto venture came under the industry's spotlight in April with State Street announcing plans to provide its trading infrastructure to pure digital exchange through its foreign exchange technology subsidiary, Curinex. The institutional grade platform is expected to be fully automated over the counter market for cryptocurrencies, featuring physical delivery and bank custody. These consortium of banks will create a cash cryptocurrency trading venue in a bid to compete against larger industry players. In their own words, from Pure Digital CEO Lauren Kiley said, we have spoken to all the top tier banks, but we think custody banks were some of the first to see demand, so they are now more advanced. And co-founder of Pure Digital, Campbell Adams, reportedly noted that 
The firm expects to roll out trading within a week with the first trade tentatively involving a Bitcoin trade. The executive also said that Pure Digital is not worried about collaborating with banking institutions, expressing confidence that the bank's contribution is important for, ind for the industry's adoption. Crypto market needs banks. I don't think it can scale without them. What's big about this is that BNY Mellon uh, last week became an exchange traded fund service provider for major crypto asset manager Grayscale Investments. And the thing that's significant about State Street is it's known for its digital currency collaboration with the Winklevoss Bitcoin Exchange Gemini. And just last month, State Street launched a dedicated digital finance division focusing on cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and central bank digital currencies. So overall, this is pretty good stuff. More and more institutions are getting into the space. Widespread adoption is here. The dominoes have begun to fall, you guys. Take a look at this. Many JP Morgan clients see Bitcoin as an asset class, says senior executive Mary Callahan Erdos in a Bloomberg interview released Tuesday. Erdos stressed that the bank will continue providing crypto services to meet the growing demand, stating that a lot of our clients say that's an asset class and I want to invest and our job is to help them put their money where they'd like to invest. Erdos also said that the debate about whether cryptocurrencies constitute an asset class is still ongoing as many experts are concerned about the market's extreme volatility. It's a very personal thing. We don't have Bitcoin as an asset class per se. Erdos stated, adding that it remains to be seen whether cryptocurrencies a store of value, the volatility, you see in it today it just has to play itself out she concluded one of the largest investing banking institutions in the united states jp morgan is known for its somewhat mixed stance on crypto with ceo jamie damon referring to bitcoin as a fraud back in 2017 the company has since softened its stance on the industry reportedly preparing to launch an actively managed bitcoin fund as well as launching debt instruments with direct exposure to a basket of crypto focused companies I wouldn't say they soften their stance entirely because, as this article mentions, just this past month in late June, JP Morgan said that institutional investors had little appetite for buying the dip, with strategists reiterating that Bitcoin would be trading between 23000 and 35000 over the medium term. What's changed? Bitcoin went down $2,000 and now you guys are like, oh, I gotta buy in. Like, what's changed? Is it the fact that these grayscale Bitcoin shares unlocking is exposing more and more wealthy clients, wealthy investors to Bitcoin and the crypto space by and large? Is that what has fundamentally changed to JP Morgan? I'm not entirely sure. I think that has to do something with it. It definitely plays a role in this because more and more wealthy investors are hopping onto the Bitcoin train. And JP Morgan realizes if they don't get with the times, they will be left in the dust. It's really that simple. In other news, Polygon launches their blockchain gaming and NFT studio, Polygon Studios, and they're attempting to corner two key segments of the blockchain industry, gaming and NFTs. The newly formed Polygon Studios has three core objectives. Establish Polygon's position as the leader in decentralized gaming, create a brand that attracts developers and investors to its NFT ecosystem, and position Polygon as the best venue for transitioning to Web 3.0. And through an initiative called Polygon Gaming Studio, the company aims to help Developers create and market decentralized games. A separate initiative, Polygon NFT Studio, aims to help brands and intellectual property owners launch customized digital collectibles and marketplaces. With the launch of Polygon Studios, games get 360 degree building support. Big brands and much loved franchises can launch on Polygon and gamers can enjoy a whole new world of play to earn opportunities and decentralized gaming, the company said just this Monday. I think it's interesting to point out that Polygon earlier this year went absolutely parabolic and that was when it was solely essentially a layer two solution, helping projects scale, it helped Ethereum among many other projects scale better scaling is essentially when you have an increased 
uh, amount of users on your platform. It can get kind of congested and Polygon addresses that issue via scaling. And if Polygon went parabolic earlier this year just as a scaling solution with this new blockchain gaming and this NFT studio that they're putting together, I think we could see Polygon go on another parabolic run, but again, time will tell. Well, that about does it for today's video, everyone. If you enjoyed it and learned something new, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. Got some links down below for you to check out. Earn some passive income on the crypto you're hodling long term via BlockFi and Celsius. Get trading today via Binance US. Stay up to date with crypto prices via CoinMarketCap. Stay up to date with your favorite altcoin events via CoinMarketCal. Follow us over on our Facebook group where we do occasional callouts. And my name's Token D Rock. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Take care until next time.